The left loves to talk about empowering women, but the real litmus test for that is your support for the Second Amendment. Because if you don't support a woman's right to choose to defend herself against a rapist with a firearm, you don't support women, period. Despite the media doing everything possible to tell us that we're not smart enough or capable enough to use firearms, millions upon millions of women are purchasing guns, signing up for carry permits, and defending their lives and their families' lives. In terms of uh, the market for gun safety training and training to acquire a concealed pistol license, uh, nowadays my classes are at least uh, half women. If you go to any local shooting range, you'll see plenty of women uh, target shooting or participating in competitions and um, uh, more and more are hunting. Uh, but I think the, the biggest increase has been the simple recognition of uh, the right of self-defense. Why do you carry? Protection. Uh, I feel safe. Yeah. I think most women would say their worst fear is to be raped. I mean, it's a terrifying thing that women have to live with. And a lot can happen in the 10 minutes after you call the cops. I'm here by myself with my infant baby. Can I please get a dispatcher out here immediately? Are your doors locked? Yes, I've got two guns in my hand. Is it OK to shoot him if he comes in the store? I can't tell you that you can do that, but you do what you have to do to protect your baby. I'm 5'1 and a half and less than 110 pounds, I'll say. And every man's going to be bigger than me. And they're going to be stronger than me. I can take all the self-defense classes I want. I can spend three years in Krav Maga. Uh, he still stands a really good chance of hurting me. And a firearm is the only thing that equalizes me against somebody that weighs, let's say, 100 pounds more than me. I can't judo or karate my way out of that thing. Um, a firearm is the only thing that gives me a fighting chance. There are some people, believe it or not, who believe that a woman cannot appropriately and effectively use a firearm for self-defense. Because you just don't know who you're going to be shooting at. And you don't know if you feel like you're going to be raped or if you feel like someone's been following you around or if you feel like you're in trouble and when you may actually not be, that you pop out that gun and you pop, pop around at somebody. As a personal protection instructor from uh, the last 10 years or so, I can tell you there is absolutely nothing different about training a woman to use a firearm than it is to train a man. In the past decades, there are more women who are uh, single heads of household in unmarried situations. They are the adult in the household. And it makes a person think, what are all of my obligations? And, and defending the family is one of those. I have a son at home who counts on me to come home. As a mother who carries, as a mother who has a concealed carry permit, that's an extension of me protecting my children. I'm the mama bear here. These are my cubs. I got to do what I can to protect them. My mom is anti-gun, and uh, my family is in, in general. And the proudest moment I had was showing my mom how to use a shotgun in, my, in the house. Uh, she felt more protected because she knew how to protect her, her children. I let them know I had a gun once they was in the house. The chief of police says she did the right thing from the same reasons why you see more women starting their own small businesses, more women taking leadership roles at all kinds of levels, uh, more women speaking out and being assertive and standing up for their rights on, on millions of issues. That trend of American women becoming ever more confident uh, about their rights and abilities. As Rebecca wrestled with child, she called for her sleeping daughter to grab her gun. I loved her before, I love her now, but she's my hero. It could have turned out to be very tragic for us if she did not have her permanent and we didn't have that gun in the house. It's part of her humanity, being able not only to defend her life, but I think what we've lost in this conversation is also defend her dignity. I, I didn't realize how much of a subconscious fear I had of someone coming in at night and hurting me. and. It's actually just gone away because I know I can defend myself. I mean, talk about a war on women. I, th I think those who would disarm women, that's, that's a war on women. If, if a woman doesn't even have a free choice to protect herself from a home invasion, a, a rapist, a robbery, or whatever, 
that's the ultimate form of, of disrespect for personhood, whether it's in a, a feminist context or any context. No, I don't think that you can advocate for women's rights um, and then also say that a woman should not have the right to protect themselves uh, with a firearm. I think it's incredibly hypocritical for any politician to talk about a woman's right to choose what happens to her body without acknowledging that they have the right to protect that body and they have the right to choose how to protect their body. They seem to want to put that responsibility on someone else who can't provide it, specifically the government. At the time of my attack, I had obtained my concealed carry weapons permit. However, being a law-abiding citizen, I left my permitted weapon at home and the very law that was meant to ensure my safety guaranteed James Bila an unmatched victim. I just want to say that actually statistics are not on your side even if you had had a gun. Chances are that, that if you had had a gun, then he would have been able to get that from you and possibly use it against you. When I hear them say things to me like, you know you have more of a chance of being harmed by your own gun, that is not their job. It is amazing how people who've never been in that situation can make those decisions for other women. Well, the poor little woman. Poor little woman. What if she's being abused by a guy and her only answer is a gun? You know, first of all, the only answer is not a gun. If, if that woman is in that much concern that she's got to wait, you know, that she can't wait for a few days, you know, she really needs to find other venues to keep herself safe. You know, a gun alone is not going to do it. How long should a woman have to wait if she's being stalked uh, before she can obtain a firearm? My answer is the time it takes for her to get in her car and drive to the gun store and make that purchase. There's the story of uh, Carol Bound, who was a hairdresser who lived in New Jersey. And she was one of, one of those women who wanted to go and get her concealed carry permit. She had a very good reason for doing so. Not that you need a good reason, but her reason was very pressing because she was dealing with an ex-boyfriend who was stalking her and who was violent and who was threatening. And that's when she took steps to protect herself by getting a restraining order, installing an alarm system, and security cameras on her house. You know how many women have been killed by stalkers or abusive spouses that had a restraining order? Each one at the time of her death had a restraining order barring We them. have the restraining order detailing Even an order concern. of protection was not enough to She did everything safe. right, filing for a personal order of protection. In that situation, whether it's me, whether it's any woman who has someone who wants to do her harm, has said they want to do her harm, or they know is going to do her harm, and is armed, a restraining order is a piece of paper. She knew that she was her own first responder. So she went and applied to get a concealed carry permit. But of course, New Jersey has a long waiting period. And while she was waiting, for New Jersey to decide whether or not she, a woman who was afraid and living in fear from her violent ex-boyfriend, could get a firearm, she was murdered in her driveway by her ex-boyfriend while she was waiting to get her firearm. But nothing was enough to save Carol Brown's life from a bitter ex-boyfriend who came to her house and stabbed her multiple times until she died. I mean, she was a wonderful girl, um, very loving. An armed society is a polite society, and armed and trained women mean fewer rape victims, mean fewer assault victims, mean fewer soft targets. That's what that means. We're not going to give up that right. Armed and trained women, they make the world a better place to live in. <laughs> they really do. Michael Bloomberg and Hillary Clinton have never walked the floor of an NRA convention. I have, and so have literally thousands of women, women who didn't simply go to indulge their husbands for the day, but women who were just as interested as their male counterparts in checking out the latest from Browning or fawning over the slimmer Glock varieties. These women are the face of the empowered American female, so you better get used to women keeping and bearing arms. We had the divine right to bear arms before men decided we could vote, and we're not giving it up without a fight.